What's up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, in today's video, I wanna talk about five books that you should read if you wanna break into the space of quantitative trading as a software engineer. And these are books that will, in general, make you a better programmer and more well-rounded. So even if you don't wanna break into the space, reading these books will help level up your game and will stay with you really for the rest of your career as a software engineer. Without further ado, guys, let's get into it. The first book is gonna be TCP IP Illustrated, Volume One. This is gonna cover your networking related concepts. And these are often frequently asked questions in any software engineering interview. Now this book is very thick and it contains 800 pages. I'm gonna be putting a Google Sheet in the description box below that's going to tell you every chapter and every subsection that you should know because I've read this entire book cover to cover and I know what's gonna be important for you. So that's where I think you're gonna get the most value out of this. Not just me telling you, hey, there's this book, you know, go read it slapping you over the head with it, okay? I'm gonna be telling you exactly which chapters are gonna be relevant for you for your own personal development. This is gonna be talking about things like TCP IP. Well, obviously it's in the title, but it's gonna go into more detail about things like multicast, UDP, ARP, uh, maximum tr you know, transmission units, uh, selective acknowledgements, congestion control, window sizing, TCP keep alives, etc. All important concepts for you to understand throughout your career as a software engineer. Sometimes things that might be asked in kind of like a junior interview, but are most likely going to be expected for you to know at a higher level interview, kind of like a mid-level or senior level interview. Okay, the next book is going to be equally as important. This book usually gets rounds dedicated to it in a actual interview. So sometimes, you know, if you're interviewing at quantitative trading firms, you might have a round dedicated to computer architecture. You will ace that round if you read the first two sections of this book. This book is called Operating Systems Three Easy Pieces. It's split up into three sections, concurrency, virtualization, and persistence, okay? Concurrency and virtualization are gonna be very important. This is gonna be talking about things like translation look aside buffers. It's gonna be talking things about like internal fragmentation, base and bounds, segmentation, uh, how memory is allocated, threads versus processes, process table, what does a call stack look like, what's a function pointer, all right? All very important concepts, multi-level feedback cues, um, time slicing, round robin algorithms for scheduling work, what is a scheduler, etc. So operating systems, three easy pieces, very important. Once again, in the description box below, I'll have a link to this book and the relevant chapters. Okay, the next book on our plate is going to be about the actual hardware of the computer itself. So you understand the operating system, which is essentially a piece of software that's running, that has a certain level of privilege. And they also understand the networking stack because you've read the networking book I just recommended and the sections that I recommended. Now you under have to understand what the hardware is. How does the computer look like internally under the hood? And this book inside the machine is going to give you exactly that, okay? This is gonna to talk to you about things like the front end and the back end of the CPU. It's gonna to talk to you about things like superscalar design, pipelining, caching, cache coherency, cache affinity. It's gonna to talk to you about things like cache lines, etc. So this is gonna be very important for you to understand. Um, the way this book is written is kind of like how a CPU was originally designed and the evolution of the CPU. A lot of this is gonna to talk to you about things that are CPU specific, which I'm gonna tell you guys to skip if you read the Google Sheet in the description box below. But at the same time, it has a lot of very high level important concepts like branch prediction tables, branch prediction units, um, x64, what does that mean? Uh, computer architecture in terms of um, um, ALUs, what does that look like? What is a instruction pointer, etc. All things that have existed regardless of the point in time that you've lived in when it comes to the CPU. So these are all important parts of CPU development and the CPU's, I guess, life cycle as an instruction gets fetched from memory and goes from wherever on disk into cache, propagates through cache into the CPU and how that instruction that gets propagated throughout the CPU and eventually turned into something meaningful that is the execution of a program. Okay, now these, are the, these three books that I just recommended are language agnostic. They have nothing to do with the programming language in particular. Now I'm gonna, the last two books are gonna be language specific and if you're looking to break into quant trading, you wanna get this in like C++ or maybe C Sharp or Python. Um, some companies use Java, but just in general, I'm gonna to talk to you about the theme that this book should cover and you'll find that language specific book that covers this theme. Hopefully that's clear. Okay, the book that I wanna recommend is called C++ Concurrency in Action by Anthony Williams. 
okay? This is a C++ concurrency book. We read about concurrency in the operating systems book. That book told us what concurrency looks like at the operating system level, okay? What's happening when a thread is being created? Memory is allocated, blah, 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 okay? Now you wanna talk about how you can actually go ahead and do that, enable that concurrency via the language of choice that you have. C++, concurrency in action is great. Usually books like these that are language specific concurrency, they are going to focus on concepts that might be a little difficult to grasp, especially with a harder language like C++. Books like these, you might need to read more than once, once, twice, three times. That doesn't mean you need to read it cover to cover three times. It might mean that you read the whole book once, then you go out into the world and you see, for example, how these concepts are used and you refer back to this book to solidify your understanding. That's why I write a lot of notes in this book. As you can see, I write a lot of notes. I can pick up on important concepts and points in this book that I know I will need to revisit simply by virtue of reading so many books that I know what content is most likely going to be important. So I put some notes, I underline certain things, and while these books are thick, a lot of these books have diagrams, guys, so don't get anxious, don't get nervous. The last book that I want to talk about, once again, these last two books, so the concurrency one and this one that I'm going to show you right now, are language specific, but they focus on a theme, and that's the most important part here. They focus on a theme that you're going to need to know and understand. And this last theme, the one we just talked about was concurrency, this last theme is going to be about core guidelines, writing clean, safe, efficient, fast code, code that people are going to want to read, okay? Code that you're going to be proud of to submit. If you're that type of person that says, well, I feel kind of sketchy about my code, I have like four nested if statements, how do I make this better? You should be right to be sketched about it. Because when I see four nested if statements in a piece of code, I know that this person probably isn't doing something right. They haven't read enough about design patterns. They haven't read enough about core guidelines or clean code. I even see senior software engineers doing this, guys. Senior software engineers that have functions that are like 120 lines. That makes no sense, okay? You need to delegate responsibility. You need to understand how to write great design, how to utilize design patterns to make your code more readable and make your code something that you're proud of submitting. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you two books. You can read either or if you're a C++ developer. You can read both. I read both. I think I'm in the... Um, that section of a book that's online where if you read the book and find a mistake, you submit a correction. I think it's called the errata. Anyways, if, if you know what I'm talking about, put it in the comment section below. I think I'm in the errata of this book because um, I've read it word for word and I've noticed some mistakes and I've, I've corrected them. But regardless, these two books are great. Beautiful C++ and C++ software design. Like I said, guys, this is going to be high level and low-level architectural design patterns that are going to take your programming to the next level. These are C++ specific. You, I'm sure you can find the equivalent in Python or the equivalent in C Sharp or the equivalent in Java, okay? Understanding the core guidelines and ways to utilize the language to write high-quality software using certain patterns and certain designs is going to help you take your code to the next level, make you a more confident software engineer, and in general, make you a better candidate for the world of quant trading and really any industry out there. Guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Um, if you want to speak to me one-on-one -on -one about breaking into quant trading, link in the description box below. I have a Calendly link. You can book my time. If you guys would like to join access to the Discord, watch these videos early, you can become a patron. Patreon link in the description box below. And if you'd like to watch my life behind the scenes, I post nothing quant. Don't message me about quant trading. You can follow me on Instagram and do so there. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Cheers.